and we meet at this table, we know to remember until he comes. I spent some time in Jeremiah's Lamentation this week. And of course, a section of the text right in the middle of it jumps out at you <laughs> because it's one of hope and comfort, even in the midst of lamentation. Chapter 3, verses 22 through 26. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed, because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, saith my soul. Therefore will I hope in him. The Lord is good unto them that wait for him, to the soul that seeketh him. It is good that a man should both hope and quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. Those who have understanding that is granted by the faith of God have this hope that this text speaks of again and again, doesn't it? Here we have a man who has watched the destruction, almost utter destruction of his people. You remember after the three groups, including the group Daniel was in, the group Ezekiel was in, and then the final group were taken from Jerusalem, all that was left was a pile of rubble and the poorest of the land. They had no defenses left from military attack. Nothing. Everything was gone. Their, the house of God was gone. Jeremiah was a priest. The house of God was gone in utter devastation. And yet, because of his faith, he could say it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. There remained a remnant, see. Now, brethren, we know that better than he, don't we? We've never experienced anything like what he experienced in the flesh, but we still know that better than he. We have this record and much more. We have much more revelation than what Jeremiah had. He was a broken-hearted man yes. and alone. Do you remember that God directed him, do not marry anyone in this city? He had no companionship, real companionship in, on, a, on a human level. Now, he had Baruch. He was a good man. But that's not the same as having a, a helpmeet. His hope was in the Lord, not in a helpmeet. And so he had this confidence in God's mercies. See? And, of course, if there's anything this table reminds us of it is God's mercies that we have not been consumed we've come to this point we've not been consumed we have come to this point they are new every morning great is thy faithfulness that is his faithfulness to himself his own nature his righteousness his truth his wisdom his goodness now, all of those aspects of the nature of God account for us. And he's bringing us to partake of those things so that we will be ready. See, this table is part of our preparation to be ready, to be alert and aware until he comes. That we might say above all, as we have said this evening, the Lord is my portion. Jeremiah didn't have a spouse, didn't have a helpmeet, but the Lord was his portion, see. In, in all of his loss, even after that, 
This is stunning to me. It just breaks my heart. The way they treated him, his own people, when they came and said, what should we do after Gedaliah? And all of that incident of the assassination, they knew they were in bigger trouble. Jeremiah, what should we do? We'll do whatever you say. They didn't mean that. They didn't mean that at all. And when he came back and told them what the Lord said, they said, you're lying. You're a liar. We're not going to listen to you. After all the heartbreak he had, then they took him to Egypt. And he had to give more wrenching news. Nebuchadnezzar's going to come and set up his pavilion right over these stones and take you all away. But his portion was in the Lord. In all of that, he knew that the Lord's mercies, he knew that Daniel and Ezekiel were there in Babylon. He sent them a letter, didn't he? Build houses, marry wives, have families. He wasn't going to have any of that. The only family he had had turned against him. So he knew that God would be faithful to the promise he had given about the 70 years. He knew that. He was absolutely confident in that. And because of this testimony and more, we are confident of these things. We don't care what anybody else thinks. Religious, non-religious, we don't care. Educated, uneducated, we don't care. Wealthy, poor, we don't care. The Lord is our portion. Amen. And we'll meet here at this table. Amen. We don't care that many are out having wonderful evening walks this evening in the beautiful weather. Maybe they gave 45 minutes to thinking about some religious things this evening. Maybe an hour. It's not the way we measure things. We're really not measuring things according to the time. Although we do speak about that, we're serious about these things. That's why. We're not keeping score. I did more time than you did. No, we're not keeping score. We're serious about these things, see? Because the Lord is our portion. We are confident that God is good to those who wait upon him. Yes. That seek him. The soul that seeks him. We've had... Some discussion about the soul today, haven't we? The soul that seeks him. He mentions the soul a couple of times here. To hope and quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. That's what we've talked about this evening. That's what we're waiting for. And being ready, alert and ready at any moment. At any moment. We may not return to our houses tonight. We know that. We may not leave this house tonight in the ordinary sense. We may not. We know that. Any moment, twinkling of an eye, we wait in hope, quietly, we talk a lot about it, but we're quiet at the same time in, in, the, in the sense that, that the prophet means here. We're quiet. Yeah. We speak about it because it just wells up within us, and it's, and it's the nature of these. That's part of being quiet and waiting is talking about these things, reminding one another, stirring up our faithful minds, as our brother Peter said, and fully preparing our hearts for that time so that we'll have the necessary oil to pass through the final Amen. test. The necessary oil. We are confident he will provide it. He brought Jeremiah through. What great comfort that brother had when he entered into glory. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Amen. When he passed out of this earth where he carried such a burden, yes. such a a terrible burden, that dear brother. Like Ezekiel. Ezekiel had a wife and was taken. Those two brothers have been dear to me for years. I've read their words and just wept. Hardly able to speak about the things that happened to them in their ministry. I thought I had trouble. 
Nobody's ever tried to kill me. I haven't lost my mate. God's never asked me to do that. And he granted me one. So in all of this, we have this confidence of God's good promises in the midst of whatever we're called to bear. Some of you have been called to bear more than I've been called to bear. Some of you are younger than I have been called to bear more than I've been called. And you've been faithful in that call. Yeah. You've waited. You're waiting patiently. You continue to wait patiently. Your hope, you, you've, you've, you've proven <laughs> by the testing God has proven in you that your heart really does belong to him. And that's a great comfort to those of us who have seen, who have partaken of these things with you and partake of these things now at this table in memory of our Savior and the peace and joy that he gives to our soul. Let's pray together. We bless you, Father. And these good and precious things that you've granted to us in this hope that you've made known, that stirs our hearts, that opens our eyes and ears and opens our mouths to speak. We cannot be quiet. These things stir up our minds and our hearts and the words that you give come forth in joy in hope, in confidence, in assurance, these words come forth from us. And at this table, we focus our memories on your son's sacrifice, our Savior's ransom of us by himself. He became the ransom, paid the price for us. So we are glad then, Father, for this hope to be provoked in us again, stirred in us again, that your promises are sure and certain, that we see more of their surety and certainty than we have seen at the dawning of this day. So we are glad, we honor your name in it, and we, spe we especially give you thanks that you gave your son that he laid down his life and for all that we are granted because of his present ministry his intercession his priesthood his apostleship and all of these things we bless your name and we rejoice in Jesus name we pray amen